like some of the places I've been reading about and hearing about in Alaska. So we're glad you're here. And we welcome everyone this morning, no matter who you are or where you are on your life's journey, you are welcome here. We are a welcoming church that lives by faith, that is known by love, and that is a voice of hope to our world. Please take a moment to sign the friendship, friendship register and leave them in your pew. Are there any announcements from the congregation? Joe. Just a reminder that next Sunday, Stewardship of Missions will be sponsoring a pre-church brunch over here in the social hall, where there will be a plethora of savory and sweet goodies <coughs> breakfast items for everybody to enjoy. And it's going to be a kickoff of our Love Thy Neighbor food drive uh, for the local food pantry. Uh, so we hope you all stop by. We'll probably roll out the food 1020 ish. Uh, and uh, we welcome everybody. And uh, please come on here. Yeah, Andrew. Um, so one of my friends from Doe School, unfortunately, uh, this past Wednesday, um, lost their house and fire. They lost everything, unfortunately. It was just. Um, and Susan Freeman asked me if anyone would be willing to donate things like gift cards to like Food Line or Walmart, provide them with like clothing for like toiletries they can buy or as well as like other food items. And we're just we're just trying to do everything we can, like with like um, uh, and along with like the Page County uh, community and like the Gunsville community. So we would appreciate any help um, for our, our students um, at Gunsville. Thank you. Thanks, Andrew. Yeah, we will do what we can. We don't have an exact list, although gift cards are always really helpful. Um, Becky, what's the mechanism to get things to you and make sure we get them? I have not heard back from Mrs. Spring yet, so. Um, I think that you can um, take them, or if you want, if Andrew can take them, anything y'all donate, take them to Gov School, and either Susan Fring or the Page County bus driver who brings the students from Page County uh, High School, Lady Newbury High School, she could transport them over to the school. Now, I think the stepfather's size extra large shirts, the brother's size large, large. and the, the girl is either small or extra small blouses. Yeah. Okay. Um, maybe we can have a box next week and people can, during the week, <coughs> or next Sunday, bring donations and um, and then we can send them on. And if you, yeah, Joe. Yeah, Stewardship of Missions is also involved in what helps to coordinate this. Um, we were kind of talking as to whether clothes or gift cards might be better at this point because the Page County community is pretty supportive over there. Uh, we're going to check back with Sue to make sure maybe just which one is the best way to go, and then uh, we'll send out a shout out to the congregation. Okay, so wait to hear the shout out from Becky, actually from Joe, sent via Becky. Via Becky, right. Okay. If we won't be here next Sunday because our grandson is getting uh, dedicated um, at our daughter's church, but if you all need you know, anything, any more information, reach out to us and we can okay. get Okay, congratulations on the baby dedication next Sunday. We'll miss you. Well, he's three, so it's delayed because of COVID and all that. But yeah, it's very delayed. But we finally got it dedicated and blessed. <laughs> well, you know, fortunately, God doesn't care about time. If it happens now, it's probably as good for back then and forever. So God bless you and the family. Uh, if there are no other announcements, uh, please do check the bulletin. There are a number of people who are listed in our um, prayer list for prayers and cards. I know that people really appreciate getting those, so uh, getting your prayers as well as receiving cards. So please attend to that if you have an opportunity. And if there's no other announcements, then I would ask that you would stand as you are able in body or spirit for our call to worship. People of God, welcome. Surely God is in this place. We come, come to worship and to rest in God's, God's presence. presence. Breathe deep, for the goodness of God surrounds us. The Holy, the Holy One who sustains the universe is near. When we are tired, worn down, and carrying heavy burdens, God is with us. 
God strengthens us that we might help carry one another's burdens. So let us join together in wonder and thanksgiving for God's love that lifts us up on wings like eagles. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please remain standing for hymn number 71. Praise to the Lord the Almighty. says this, even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted, but those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings like eagles. 
They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not be faint. People of God, trust that God has strengthened you. You are forgiven. Amen. Pray for good health. Okay, yeah. Is that all right? Sure. Okay, yes. Yeah, so we pray for good health for you, and you might want to pass the healing on, the blessing on to others. Sure. Uh, thank you. Thank you.
Thank you, choir, and thank you, the bigger choir. It's like the sounds from angels in heaven. So within 49 short verses, Mark has taken us from the baptism of Jesus by John and the filling of the Holy Spirit immediately into 40 days in the wilderness where he encounters wild beasts, is tempted by Satan, 
and is served by angels. He calls his first four disciples, Peter, James, Peter, Andrew, James, and John, who immediately leave their fishing businesses to fish for people. And they all head to the synagogue, the local Jewish church, where Jesus teaches and astonishes everyone, for he teaches as one with authority. And there he has healed a man of an unclean spirit, and then immediately he heads to Peter and Andrew's home. I imagine after all of that, if I was Jesus, I'd be ready for Sunday brunch and then a nap and then maybe some quiet conversation with friends. But then life happens to Jesus even as it does to us. Peter's mother-in-law was sick. Literally in the Greek, she was on fire with a severe fever, which in those days would have been a very serious physical condition without aspirin and all the things, other things we can pull out of our medicine cabinets, all the medications that we have. As soon as the disciples heard about her illness, they told Jesus. And the text says, without a word, Jesus goes to the bed in which she is lying, takes her by the hand, and raises her up. The same word for raises up or lifted up is used elsewhere in Mark's gospel. For example, in Mark 9, the father of a son with epilepsy, epilepsy begs for Jesus' help. Jesus takes the child by the hand and raises him up, healed. In Mark 16, 6, Jesus raises himself up from the dead. That's real strength. So Sunday brunch was served and all was well. The fever left her and immediately she got up and served, by the way. Uh, but there's more. Peter's mother-in-law is the first woman who was mentioned in the book of Mark. Upon being touched by Jesus, she served him. The Greek word for serve is di deacon, diaconus, our English deacon. And it means both to serve at the table or in a house and also to do ministry. That word is used by Mark three other times. First in Mark 1, 13, in the desert of temptation, the angels deaconed Jesus. They served him. In Mark 10, 45, Jesus refers to his own role in this way. The Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve. And then in Mark 15, 41, Mark describes women who were watching the crucifixion Women who, when Jesus was in Galilee, followed him and served him and came up to Jerusalem with him. From the beginning to the end, women were true followers of Jesus, responding with faith in service to others. Peter's unnamed mother-in-law is the first character in Mark's gospel to demonstrate true discipleship. She's touched by Jesus, and then she serves others. And I like to imagine that perhaps she was at the foot of the cross, as well as the one with the unclean spirit whom Jesus healed when Jesus lay dying on the cross. Walter Brueggemann, who is perhaps the premier Old Testament scholar of our time, makes the point in the book Gift and Task that our lives, touched by God, are pure gift, gifts freely given. And the touch of God in our lives inspires grace-filled tasks to further the work of God. It's not quid pro quo, tit for tatter, I give you something, you give me something back in return, but pro bono, for the public good. When evening came, People began to bring to Jesus all those who were sick and demon-possessed because the day of Sabbath was over and they could make the walk and carry the sick. And Jesus healed many who were sick of various diseases and he drove out many demons. It seems like no one, no one was beyond the reach of Jesus' compassionate touch and service. And then very early, 
while it was still dark. And we're going to hear that phrase again um, on Easter morning, very early in the morning when it was still dark. So don't forget that. Jesus got up, went out, and made his way to a deserted place, and he was praying there. Jesus, the charismatic prophet, the restorer of fullness to life, is also a mystic who prays to be grounded in God. We need both action and silence and contemplation. Peter and his companions, the text tells us, were literally hunting Jesus down, and they find him praying alone, and the disciples say, they must have been anxious because they say, everyone is looking for you, instead of saying, can we join you in prayer, Jesus? And he replies, let's go on to the neighboring villages so that I may preach there too. So what is the good news about our source of strength this morning? First, Mark provides evidence that Jesus is the Messiah. Jesus' contemporaries would have been familiar with the Old Testament readings and other ancient Jewish writings that note that when the Messiah, the Anointed One, comes and conquers Satan, health will descend like dew and illness will vanish. Jesus is also the one who takes time alone to go to the desert to pray, rather than doing a victory dance about all these ministry successes and launching a public campaign to build a bigger synagogue for all. Jesus is our source of strength. He is the Messiah. Second, Mark connects healing, which is a gift, with the strength and will for service, a task. When we trust Jesus, recognizing that we aren't all that, then we can be lifted up from our dis-ease and emotional, physical, and spiritual. Isaiah promises the same gift from God. God gives power to the faint and strength to the powerless. Even youth will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait on the Lord will renew their strength. They, you, shall mount up on wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. This loving gift of Jesus' touch in our life begets loving task, lifting others up. And by the way, Everyone can lift someone else up. One of my favorite books about aging and eldering that I read years ago at the recommendation of a pastor who said it would be a good thing to give my more elderly parishioners, and so since there might be a few of you here, maybe I need to go buy some copies of that book and pass it out. But anyhow, the book was called um, No Shadow, No, no Wrinkles on the Soul. And they talked about little examples of people who were, felt like they were useless and no longer good for anything, who would use a smile in the nursing home to brighten someone else's day, or say to a doctor, thank you for helping me, or to somebody who gives them a ride, tell me how you're doing while we arrive to this appointment. I happen to know someone who has that ministry of listening so well. That is a renewable source of strength. That that source of strength is renewable, and that's my third point. We simply make our way to a place to pray, to listen to God, and use words if necessary. That passage actually comes from Dietrich Bonhoeffer, who wrote, it matters little 